Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. We're continuing on with our terminal world discussions. I'm having a blast talking about these archetypes because there's so many interesting archetypes from the dual terminal lore that really deserve to be delved into, especially since we have the new terminal world set. This is what we've been focusing on. This set has two unconfirmed archetypes that are going to be part of it here. A lot of people think this is going to be a... Uh, elemental base set where uh, they have four archetypes getting support the first two that we already know are fire and water base so people are really speculating wind and earth support here which leads us to our topic today x sabers um this is an archetype that very much so needs support it actually was a really good archetype way way back in the day um and fell off and never really got any kind of support over the years to kind of keep them up with the times um, but I think this one actually has some pretty decent legs as why it could be chosen to end up in here. But we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that as we go. So, um, let's just get into it. We're going to talk about the X Saber cards that already exist that actually make support interesting and give them kind of a nice little base to kind of build on. And then we're going to talk about what they're missing and what I'd like to see from their support overall. So let's get into it. Starting off here, as far as the cards that are playable for the archetype, Main deck monsters, Boggart Knight. This card is just uh, Goblinburg. When it's a normal summon, you special a level 4 lower X Saber from hand. It's a, just a nice extender, right? Especially if they get easy synchro plays, or maybe even a Link 1 or a Link 2. Just helps put bodies on the field. That's totally solid. The deck does not have a ton of ways to spam the board quickly, so this card could come up. Next up is Dark Soul. Uh, basically what he does is on end phase, if he was sent to the grave that turn, from the field to the grave specifically, keep that in mind, he adds an X-Saber monster from deck to hand. This could be a key card if the archetype gets something in the realm of a an archetype hand trap. Um, you know, multi-faker type card that lets you play on the opponent's turn, or it could be, you know, sub Fiendus level, like actual hand trap. Um, rather than like an engine facilitator, but as long as it does something on the opponent's turn, then this slow effect can still be kind of mitigated a little bit, but still not a bad card, it's a plus one. Um, from there you have X-Saber, Fall Troll. Uh, this guy, if you control two or more X-Sabers, um, he can special summon himself, and then once per turn he can target a little four lore X-Saber engrave and reborn it. So, not a bad extender that also then gets you another body on field. I don't love that you have to have two X-Sabers on field, so... Um, you know what I mean? That's kind of a, a tough requirement that sometimes people can kind of, if they can foresee your line of play, they can just say, oh, I have a removal effect. They have two bodies on the field. Let me remove one. And now I know Fall Trolls turned off, right? So we'll see. But like still not a terrible card if it resolves for sure. Um, Air Bellum. Uh, this card is basically just a tuner, but then it's also just a white magical hat if it inflicts battle damage. By direct attack, you discard a random card from their hand. Okay, I mean, it's just meh. And then Ragi Gura, uh, if this card's normal or special summon, you can add an X-Saber monster from Grave back to hand. Uh, not terrible. If there were combos, this could be a card that comes up in combos that gets you, like, follow-up, potentially. So, not a terrible card. Um, nothing crazy, though. Uh, honestly, none of these cards are really that impressive. There's no Stratos-level card for consistency. There's no... Uh, you know what I mean? There's no tour guide level card for extension. The closest thing you have is Boggart Knight, but it takes an extra card out of hand, so just kind of okay. Uh, it doesn't take an extra card, but like you have to, you're required to use another card from here, you're not plussing off of it. So just really mediocre for the monsters. Uh, getting into the spells, you have Gotham Second Call. This is an interesting extender card, but it's got a lot of qualifications. Um, or just like, you know, you have to already have a X Saber Synchro on the field, is basically the hardest part about this card. Um, but I could see a world where, like, if we got a new Synchro that, like, searches a Gotham Speller Trap, that could be interesting, because then, like, if you make him, you can search Second Call, and then Second Call just reborns two X-Sabers in, in your grave, and then you just keep playing, right? So, that's pretty cool. It could be a one-of for certain combo lines if that kind of card got printed, but... Um, other than that, I, I probably wouldn't hard play it unless it's like searchable for specific reasons because it does kind of need you to already be able to play for it to do anything, which is tough. Uh, Saber Slash, another, another situation where like if it becomes super searchable, it destroys a number of face-up cards on the field equal to the number of attack position X Sabers you control. So, you know what I mean? Non-targeting removal, it could just be a one-of tech card for um, certain situations. It out flood, outs floodgates. It's a nice card for the deck if it's really searchable. Uh, then we move to the traps. No other good spells. Honestly, the spells are lacking roughly, too. 
Uh, Gotham's Emergency Call. If a face-up X-Saber monster is on the field, you can target two X-Sabers in any graveyard and special them both to your field. That's actually pretty good. It's a double call the Haunted. Only restriction is you have to control an X-Saber, but it's only one, so actually not that bad. This card's actually decent. If the deck becomes like a control deck that like has a bunch of monsters that can play on the opponent's turn, this card actually could be pretty spicy for sure. Um, Saber Hole. Uh, it's essentially a searchable um, counter trap that uh, if you control an X Saber, you can negate the summon of any monster and destroy it. So not a great one. Not a great one in the sense that it's not an Omni Negate. Doesn't protect you from like board breakers and stuff. But it's still a decent interruption for what it is. So again, if it becomes super searchable, it obviously gets way better here. They move to the extra deck. Uh, first is Saber Hyun Lee. Uh, this one, uh, when it's Synchro Summon, can select and destroy up to three Spell or Trap cards on the field. That's pretty good just to have inherently. It's not always going to come up. That's a pretty damn powerful tool if you have a deck that can like really easily get to a six, especially like if it if your deck will consistently have ways to like play through after just making this card because then like playing into certain matchups that are back row based and, uh, and stuff like that just being able to make this card a, on a dime and just like boom clear the board is actually pretty nasty so uh that's cool it's a cool card um and then they also have Gotham's, uh of course uh, we've actually seen him come up not that long ago competitively i think we saw him in the um, virtual world see some play because you would make him and he would um, tribute himself to make your opponent discard a card. Then you could reborn him, do it again. Uh, yeah, so he, he hand loops your opponent. He's not once per turn at all. So in this deck, this is the scariest card to me. It's probably the best card in the archetype overall. Just because of the potential of, like, if they just give the deck enough engine pieces to, like, just spam X Sabers really well, then, like, does the deck just get to the point where you can make this guy with three X Sabers on field and go rip 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 and rip three from your opponent it's possible it's possible so that'd be the one thing i have trepidation about as far as being like konami take it easy don't make Gotham's uh, a nuisance or just reprint him with a hard ones per turn hell well. okay and the last card here is mx saber invoker i don't even know the lore behind this card but he has x saber in the name so he like fits a bunch of molds plus uh, his effect works with uh x saber so it's like that's fine um this is a little hint that I want to point at. Konami just unbanned MX Saber Invoker in the OCG. And everybody was like, oh, it doesn't really do much. There's not a ton of, there's not really any decks that like really want to use it. Like it's just okay. And then I, and then I sat there and I, uh, and I just now, when I was like going through the X Saber cards and I was like, wait, is that, or were they just hinting that X Sabres are going to be, either get support soon or just straight up be in, in Terminal World? That's absolutely on the table. In fact, I think it may be even more likely just because I never connected the dots. Um, so yeah, I think X Sabres may be a little bit more likely just because of this. Plus the archetype has a good amount of Earth stuff. Earth, Earth, Earth. Are they all Earth? Oh, I never realized. I guess I kind of thought that they weren't all Earth, but like they're kind of a little bit mixed up. But no, they're literally all Earth. So I would not be surprised if this is the archetype that ends up in here. I'll be honest. If I could pick, I'd actually rather see X Sabers not end up in here because I think they're in a place where they're going to need more than four cards. Because I really don't want them to get the Naturia treatment, which was they gave Naturia three new cards and basically Naturia became playable. But like the playability of Naturia was basically just from the three new cards. And like, yes, you played World Tree and uh, Sunflower, but that was like it. Other than that, it was just the whole the new cards running the show. I don't want them to like give X Saber support, but then like you only end up playing like two old school modern you know what I mean? two old school like x saber cards like all you do all you play now is Gotham's because they spam that out and maybe like whatever it is dark soul if they're able to like cheat him out and get the free plus like i really don't want that to be the case so i think to round it out better i think they could uh really work around what the archetype already has with a full-on like structure deck eight cards of support but listen we'll get what we get i still want them to get support so um, I'm not going to complain if they're in there. I just think best case scenario would be like a full-on structure deck for them. Uh, but here's what they're missing. Everything. I mean, let's just face it. This this archetype is completely power crap. It doesn't put bodies on the board other than Boggart Knight. I don't even... And Fall Troll. But like, how are you getting two bodies on the field? You have to open like Boggart Knight, 
a monster plus fall troll to like make fall troll live turn one so like not super likely um so that's definitely something uh but there are some interesting pieces here like i could see a world where like if they got a really good central main deck monster that helps you summon any X Saber monster from the deck, so you're getting tuners if you want, you're getting specific monsters to link up with, synchro climb with whatever you want to do with them, and then that even opens the the doorway for if Epic Saber gets unbanned in the TCG as well, which I don't think is impossible, especially if we get that support eventually. Like that means just rank three engines could be good because if that main mo central monster in your archetype is a level four Earth Warrior or Beast warrior now just any rank three engine gets you into your engine now so you could play it in some sort of phantom knight spam deck you know like level three rank three spam deck to kind of get into the engine if it if it's good enough uh for what it wants but the deck's really missing everything i mean i'm not gonna lie um the main deck monsters there's a couple we have obviously the couple that are like okay but like those can't be the core. Those those can be pieces that can be part of an engine uh, in its whole, entirely entirety, but it can't be the core. There's got to be better cards around them to kind of facilitate them for sure. Uh, spells and traps. I mean, I don't even know if they have a single staple spell or trap right now. They don't have a rota. They don't have a consistency card. They don't even have a great interruption. They have one okay counter trap for interruption, and then a follow up like Call of the Haunted S card for the archetype just okay not great uh and the extra deck, maybe that's the strongest thing they have right now is the extra deck between him lee offering you like a really easy to access potentially uh just like back row hating card which is nice Gotham's doing the hand rip thing where if they are able to spam the board hard enough then this card can just hand up your opponent entirely or invoker especially this is probably the most important card going forward to be honest because even if the support isn't great, as long as they get like one specific card in the main deck that is like an insane, you know, Mathmex circular S card, whatever it be, you know what I mean? Exosister Malpha level uh, support, any rank three deck can just kind of get you into that insane level of power card if, you know, they can just put two threes on the field. So that's cool. Um, we'll see. Um, all in all, though, deck needs a lot of help. Um, four cards could be nice, especially if they're on that level of like the ice barriers, because like they they've made some good support so far. So I'm hoping they keep it up. I actually would not be upset if uh, this archetype gets chosen, uh, especially if they're going with the elemental theme. This may be the Earth archetype I'd want to see the most. Uh, this and probably Ritual Beast for wins, but we'd have to wait and see. So. Uh, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, as always. If you are a bigger fan of X-Saber than me, and I, I didn't even start playing the game again until 2017, so I really haven't messed with X-Saber almost ever in my entire life, officially, like, playing the archetype. So, um, please let me know if you're a bigger fan, you, you're more nostalgic for it, you messed around with it when it was actually good. Let me know in your, uh, in your official thoughts down below, like, what you would want to see. If you want to get more specific, exactly what the archetype needs, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below on that stuff. But, I'm Andy for today. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Stay tuned for more. We should have the... Uh, all the TCG exclusives and OCG imports for Age of Overlord revealed tomorrow. And I'm pretty sure Konami's kind of been going light with the Phantom Nightmare reveals because they knew we were finishing with Age of Overlord reveals for the TCG side of things. And then I think we're going to we're gonna run straight into a million reveals next week. We still have like 50 cards to get revealed. And that, arc, that set is dropping in like three weeks in the OCG. So like 20 days, 50 cards. We're getting a ton uh thrown right at us so stay tuned for that i'll bring you a ton of news as that stuff drops very excited there um and yeah that's it for me here thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one peace